westfallart.com. Yeah, in fact, my son got mad at me when I made these cards. He said, you didn't say artist on the card. <laughs> <laughs> you say art on there twice. Yeah, I know. I thought it, it covered. It got the point. <laughs> so you, you said earlier that you're discovering yourself as an artist. Absolutely. I didn't have any preconceived ideas. I didn't even know what I'd be good at or if I would have any talent. So what you... I mean, obviously you've uh, landed on landscapes. Are you are you happy with staying with landscapes, or do you want to keep experimenting and trying other stuff? Well, let me let me tell you, part of what I did at the the Big Five Hundred was I, I did a I did a horrendously terrible picture of my dog, and right number one, it's small, and and contrary to what you might think, small is harder. To oh. me, it's way harder, and the it, the dog it looks like a six-year-old painted the painting it's terrible it's really horrendous but in fact my family were surprised that I went ahead and submitted it to the show and I told them you know what you told me to be willing to make mistakes this was a learning experience for me and I'm gonna put it in there because I did it for the show and by golly I'm gonna I learned something from it what I learned is I'm not good at painting animals <laughs> I tried you know this one of my daughter from the back, it was okay, I could get the shapes and things. But I tried painting my dad, and you know, he died when I was 17. And from a photo even, and getting the shapes exactly right. You know, if you do a tree a little wrong, it's still a tree. Right. But if you do Aunt Marjorie wrong, it's like, well, who the heck is that? It yeah. doesn't look like anybody. It turns out to be Beetlejuice. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I, I guess what I aspire to is to the point where I can I can get the shapes just like I want them, and I could do, do portrait portraits. Yeah. Because to me, that's like that's what the masters did, and you know they really look good. But I'm trying to do more of this because I need to free myself. Yeah. You know, and let that artistic. I want to try some sculpture because I used to love working in clay. I took an eighth, you know eighth grade modeling clay, mm -hmm. and we did things, and I loved it. You know it, what we're discovering through this this, uh, and I. I know this is new for me because I'd never really thought about it before, but as I talk to more and more artists, um, you know, the work is the work. I mean, it exists, and you can put this on a gallery wall, and, and somebody may or may not discover it, you know? But really, the people who buy art are the people who, they buy art from people. Right. They don't buy, they don't buy it because it's a pretty purple painting. They buy it because they know people who who you who you are and what you, what your story is and where things have come from, you know, and and uh, that's a big part of what I'm trying to incorporate into my own process right now is how do we use this internet thing, you know, right. the social media that we have available to us to market ourselves because that's the new gallery, you know, the galleries are going yeah. away. Pretty quickly, because really Except they're fourth just Except Fourth F and Friday, that's not going away. Uh. Well, it's and it's it's not a it's not a gallery in that it's going to be in one place every time or all the time. Right. You know, most galleries are like they're owned by a person, and that person is represents the artists that are displayed there or whatever. And then you know, and that's the job, that's the gig. You know, and the thing that we're talking about with the Fourth F and Friday is is more of a gallery slash party kind of a thing you know where everybody comes together for that's the thing one that Chris night, Haberman you know. was talking about is you, it's you got to build artist relationships mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's why he's so supportive of artists and I appreciate you guys out here interviewing you know here with day 51 yeah and, you know so it's interesting that here it is I, Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve and we're we're doing an interview it's so much fun <laughs> I mean I I really I said this a couple times, but I always thought that I would interview people somehow, some way. I thought that I was going to travel the, the world or the United States first and sit down with people that were just normal people and get to know them and write a right. book about their story or just have a, a set list of questions and have everybody answer it and just make a book out of it. I mean, it's... A very evolved version of that from but a lot of times what we see too ago. yeah a lot of times what we see when we talk to people is we've had people that we asked to be uh, interviewees
celebrities mm -hmm. that we wanted to interview, and they were, oh, well, I don't really have anything going on or whatever, you know, and they, they refused us. But then they were inspired to start working, you know, because all of a sudden, oh, you know, if I did have something going on, that'd be kind of fun. Or, or we talk to them, you know, we actually do interview them. Yeah. And then there's a shift in understanding of their art, even, you know, like sometimes, like you're talking about discovering yourself as an artist, you know, and I, and I've had a hard time with that, you know, because the artist in me is kind of at opposition with it, because I could never do what you're doing, like this. The, uh, the I have, uh, I have like, yeah, I have like three, uh, three years was my max, and three yeah. years I usually start doing something stupid and get myself fired. That's just the way it's always worked for me, and that's the artist in me. I swear, it's the guy that doesn't want to get locked down. He doesn't want to get stuck somewhere. Well, you know? I'll tell you, since I started painting, it has made it a whole lot harder to sit here and work on the computer, or you know, yeah. The, the thing I like about what I do is. I, I deal with a lot of customers and, and I'm working with a lot of engineers and a lot of people so I get to get out and talk with them but it has inspired me to actually be a, become a better salesperson because now I'm trying to be more interested in the person I'm talking to yeah not just selling them a motor or a little resistor but getting to know them a little bit and I, so when I come in I, and if I sit down in their office or cubicle I look around to see a couple things and and sometimes there's a little art somebody they're doing something I say hey do you paint you? and so that opens up things to talk about yeah mm -hmm. and the creative expression is like so i mean uh, and i i agree with jacob in a lot of ways he said that he he thinks that everybody's an artist and i do i think everybody's got creativity in them you know i don't think we're all built to be artists but i think that everybody has I think uh, art, a lot of creativity available to them you know i think but, art is one of the the few or many universal languages. I think that there, there is a set number of universal languages. Love, art, uh, food, music. music. There's a set number, but it's, it's something that anybody in the world could look at and understand or get their own understanding of right. it. And that's, I think that it's innate. It's even even if it's not your your biggest quality of your personality, you still got it in you. And it's like if you nurture that, it'll grow and it'll it'll make you grow as a person. You know what's interesting is for, for me as an engineer as a per perfectionist, learning to color outside the lines. You know, and just like my son would come up and go, there are no lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm talking about when I when I look for the accidents. You know, it's like, uh, I don't, you know, I could probably sit down with a grid and and if I really wanted to work on something hard enough, I could probably make it look like a photograph. Right. You know, but I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to see that myself. I don't want to see myself do that because I've seen it before and it's. I think that each one of us has a very unique uh, style if we're allowed to just be in the world and create from where we're at. And, 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 it, and that's a difficult, because uh, it's kind of like the idea of, of uh, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, you know, right. I mean, like there's the, there's the highly trained artist who you know, can recreate just about anything they want, you know? And then there's these other artists that, that like, you know, say like Andy Warhol is a good example, you know, or Jackson Pollock is another right. good example of, well, they're not really doing anything, you know? I mean, but they are, I mean, but to the to the untrained eye, it's their you know? own artistic expression. It's, it's... I think there's a lot of, lot of artistic depth in simplicity as as well as well i think it's what you want to express as an artist yeah i mean what is it that you're trying to get across and some people aren't and see that's the thing i'm trying i'm i, I know that there is discovery here for me right and i'm not trying to direct that discovery i'm trying to it, let it be a surprise right that's awesome and, yeah and no because i started out trying to do photorealism 
Yeah. And, I, and I wanted to is perfectly recreate so that you say, oh, I love that scene and I, I can look at it every day. And I, that top one I did as a gift for my sister Penny. And I wanted to give her a visual vacation of a place she could just go. Um, but I wanted it to be not a photograph. I wanted it to be a little more um, stylized and, and, you know. Yeah. No, I, I figure, you know, I mean, if, if why not just take a photograph? If, if you want it to look that clear and you want to, if you want it to be the picture, take the photograph. Yeah. That's why I you became know? a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you because I create... couldn't paint it. I was like, I want it to be perfect. But you print your photos. You did for the show. You printed the photos on the panels. Mm -hmm. So that was artistic in the way you did it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I guess, that's where I... I'm, I'm still learning, I'm still discovering myself as a photographer. Every time I go out, I'm finding new stuff that I love. I'm finding new techniques that I like. Every time I get in the dark room, I'm learning it a little bit better. And the, the liquid photo emulsion was a completely new technique that I had never tried before, so I, I had to stumble through that. <laughs> that was it's, miserable. Isn't it fun to scare yourself and try something that could, oh, I could wreck this, but... Yeah. Okay, it's amazing, and I will admit every day. I will admit, I did. I tried something. I tried to do a, a, a painting on on one of the panels of this sketch of my daughter's face. It was horrendous. It was terrible. <laughs> I painted over it, and I was not going to submit that to the <laughs> mistake <laughs> has been made. But it's not one that I'm right. willing to share. Yes, some things you just can't share. No. Then you shouldn't. Did we... Okay. I know we talked about this painting. I don't think we showed it to the camera. This is the barn that we were talking about. It's very well done. And that was... It's so interesting, the sky. I had somebody come in and, and just rip all over the sky. Um, because... Oh, but, uh, hang on the little... Uh, oh. The, um, because you're not supposed to show those brush strokes, and don't you know how to blend this? And you know this should be smooth. And yeah, and I was like, huh, are you interested in what I was trying to do? <laughs> you know, and people come in with these preconceived ideas, or you know, because they've been told what to expect. And it's like people look at this one and go, well, you don't ever see a sky that colorful that looks like that. And I said, yeah, I do. Van Gogh. Yeah. You saw brush strokes and everything that he did. And see, that one, I wanted to make the sky really colorful because I wanted to really focus on trying to do the reflection in the wet sand. Well, the other thing is the, the contrast between the figures and the background. You want to bring out the, the silhouette of the pictures. Right. Of the figures. And it, what was interesting was, yeah, um, my mom, was, she knew what I was doing. She goes, well, they're, they're going to be uh, dark. And then she saw it, she goes, I love them dark. They're silhouettes, it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, my favorite part about that painting is, is the foot and the reflection of my son as he had his foot over the, over the, the wet sand. Yeah. Just cause that turned out exactly like I wanted it to, hmm. you know? And a tiny little detail. Yeah. But it adds, it adds to, all of a sudden he's going somewhere. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden there's, there's activity not. happening. Yeah. It just, it takes me, that was the end of a perfect day. That's what I call that. And it takes me right back when I see that. Very nice. And, and that has more power on me than a photograph. Yeah, and I think that's the whole point of painting, right? Is to try to somehow capture something... That you couldn't capture. That you otherwise. wouldn't be able to show in a photograph, and it's your own point of view. Right. But not quite, right? Well, and imagine. Because it never turns out exactly the way no. you had it in your mind. Right, right. But now I'm discovering, oh my gosh, I can, I can do this. Yeah. No, that's amazing. So. So, I, you know, like I said at the Big 500, I, I still kind of feel like. Uh, number one, as I told you, uh, there's got to be more prolific artists, people who are painting every day. And I think that was the point that the guy that we were talking to was trying to make. He was a little too drunk to really say it right, but 
he was frustrated that I'm just new artist and you know it's like I've been an artist my whole life I was like born an artist he was saying and you just suddenly took up painting